So picking up on example two of 1.2 notes, plot the following points in the plane and then determine if J, K, and L, M are congruent. Do you guys remember what it means to be congruent? Yep, same measure, congruent. So they're going to be the same. So we're going to go ahead and plot these points. If this is something you don't feel super confident on, it's okay. We're going to practice it. I want to make sure you're practicing it because I know that that was a big part of algebra. And I know last year's algebra might not have had a chance to cover all the same stuff. So remember, it's x, y. So j is negative 3 in the x position, which means on the x-axis, x-axis, we're going to go negative 3. So 3 backwards. And then we're going to go up 4 because it's a plus 4 in the y direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to plot our point, negative 3, 4. So right here, I'm going to name this point J. It's important to label them based on knowing what they are. And when I look at it, I can see that you knew what you graphed. The next one over is 2, 4. 2 in the x direction, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're right here. That's K. It's a segment, so we join them together. Then we also now have, let's see if I can change my color here. Um, we have LM. L is 1, 2. So you go 1 in the x direction, up 2, 1, 2. And then you have M, 1, negative 2. 1 in the x direction, negative 2, down 2. We plot that point. We connect it with our line segment. Sorry, hon. Okay. I didn't label either of them, which would make this incorrect. L, M. We need to know if they are congruent, which means we have to know how long they are. We have an advantage. As of right now, these lines are parallel to one of the axes. This one is parallel to this axis, and this one's parallel to this axis. We don't have a slope that's not zero or undefined, which means that we can count it by just counting. One, two, three, four, five. Over here, we have one, two, three, four. I must have done something slightly wrong. I went down too far, guys. I'm so sorry. I went down one too far. It was negative two. It should end right here. So if you're basing yourself mine, please fix that. I went down one too many and needed to go up to negative two. And so we end here at one, two, three, four. Are those the same measure? No. no. I am going to show one more time how to do it the other way. You can do this by finding that length of JK equals the absolute value. You look to see which one of these is changing. The four is the same. So the thing that's changing are the x values. You can do negative three minus two absolute value. Again, negatives and then subtracting from negatives is something that people struggle with. You can view this as if you owe money. You owe me $3. I loaned you two more dollars. How many dollars do you owe me? You owe me $5. So that's the absolute value of negative five, which we know to be the value of five. We have LM. Here we see the x values are the same. The y values are what are different. I can do that subtraction there. 2 minus negative 2, absolute value around them. 2 minus a negative. Minus a negative becomes a plus. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Those are just two different ways to look at this and to see it. I want you guys to be able to see that mathematical way of doing it. But this is perfectly acceptable. If you looked at this and you saw that these weren't the same, that's okay. Hey, Owen, hun, can you put all that back up over your nose? Okay, so we have to say that these are not congruent. So we say JK segment. We put that congruent mark. To show that it's not congruent, we put a slash through it. And then we put LM, segment LM. So segment JK is not congruent to segment LM. Any questions on this portion? Okay. On example B for this, I would like to give you guys a couple minutes to try this. Let's say about three minutes. Do your best to try it. We'll go through it together, okay? So going through it, we're plotting point A. We're going negative 2 in the x direction. Negative 2 of 4. 
plotting that one right there. Negative 2, 4. Let me make sure I put it there. That's A. Then we have 3, 4. 3 in the X direction, 4 in the Y direction. 3, 4. Okay. And then down here we have C, which is 0, 2. 0 means that you have not moved off the Y axis. You're still at X equals 0. 2 is up 2. And then you have 0, negative 2, down 2. Okay, so that was C, D. Again, we can count these. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We were not too imaginative with these examples, were we? The exact same length. So we could say that AB, segment AB, is not congruent. That's a terrible congruent sign. Let me try again. Not congruent to CD. Again, I can verify this mathematically. We see here that our Ys aren't changing, so the thing I'm working with are my X values. So I have AB equals the absolute value of negative 2 minus 3 gives me absolute value of negative 5, which we know to be 5. And then CD equals, our X's aren't changing, they're both at 0, so I have just the negatives, or just the Y's, I mean. So 2 minus negative 2. Subtracting a negative 2 is the same thing as adding. And once again, we get 4. I wrote the number 4 here on my page. I'm erasing that. That should be a 5, and this one should be a 4. That should be a 5. This one should be a 4. So we see that they are not congruent. Any questions here? So when three points are collinear, what does collinear mean? Yep, they're lying on the same line. You can say that one point is between the two others. So when there's three, one has to be in the middle, right? So point B, in this example, all three on the same line, point B is in the middle of A and C. Point E is not between these points because they're not collinear. It's off to the side. So they're not collinear, so it's off to that side. So E is not between D and F. Do you guys have any questions here? Do you need another second here? Or can I switch our slides? Okay. The segment addition postulate. You have just a little bit right here. You're filling in two different parts. There, these portions right here that looks slightly bolded. So the segment addition postulate is a beginning, our first real postulate that we're going to be using regularly. And it says if B is between A and C on a line, then AB plus BC equals AC. So if AB plus BC equals AC, then B is in between A and C. So what this is showing is that if we have a hole, AC, and there's a point in between, we can add up each of these two parts to get the whole. If we have the whole in one part, we can subtract to find one of the missing parts. So it's just showing to get the whole, you'd normally add. To find part a part, you would subtract. So it's just showing that we can break that up into two segments and add them together to get that whole. We're going to see this in action right now. We have three examples, or three parts to this example. And it looks like they're all written out except for what you're looking to find. So right now, let's take a second and write at the top of the first one, find DF. The second one, find GH. And the third one, find KL. So let's take a second and write those to tonight. When you're looking that over, studying for your quiz tomorrow, you remember what that's going to look like. I'm showing this the mathematical way where we're plugging in a formula. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you our whole segment is DF. So I'm going to start there. And I'm going to say DF, if I can write, let's see, DF equals, I put, so the distance of DF equals the sum of its parts. The first part it has is DE. And the second part it has is EF, okay? Do you guys see where I got that? Does that make sense? Okay, so again, I just did the whole thing equals the sum of its parts, so the two parts we have. Now I'm gonna substitute in what I know. What I know is that DE is 23 and that EF is 35. I know it because they're listed below those sections. Oops, sorry. Now they said what we're looking for is DF. Well, this is already set up nicely to be able to find DF, where all I have to do is do the addition. 23 plus 35. Again, if you guys need to use a calculator, that is okay. Can somebody tell me what this value is? Jana? 58. Yep, 58. India, huh? Okay. The next one, they want us to find GH. This is a little different, right? Now we're finding a part, not the whole. But I'm going to begin the exact same way because this is just, a, uh, just an equation I can create each time. My whole FH, FH equals the sum of my parts, FG plus GH. So again, I'm just writing out the equation that would get me the whole line. So whole equals sum of my parts. This part plus this part. Again, I'm going to substitute in what I know. This above shows me that this whole length here is 36. Oh, and we see that our whole value is that FH value, which is 36. You can tell it's for the whole thing because they put the segment to demonstrate all the way across. And then the only other value we know is this FG. It's in between that FG and that's 21. I'm just going to bring down that GH. GH is just acting as an X here. I want to get that GH by itself. What do I have to do to get this 21 away from that GH? Okay. Yep, you can go. Subtract it from 36. Subtract it from 36. We're going to subtract. John, do you have this number? Um, you don't have to. Yep, yeah, let's say if you didn't, you didn't have to. I just didn't, I wasn't sure. So we see that GH equals 15. Yes, sir? Oh, you mean this part right here? Yeah. I would like to see that for right now. On your quizzes and tests, I'd like to see this line, guys. It's just a formula that lets me know that you know what's happening. So just remember a whole plus the segments equals the part, some of its parts. So how would I write that statement here? Would somebody like to give that a, a shot? How would I write that section? Cam? Exactly right. So on your quiz tomorrow, I would give you a point for this. This is something that's important. Now, what can we substitute in? What do we know now? No. What did you say? No. You know the, which part? 144. You know 144, and where does it go in for? Oh, 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 hold on, guys. I was dyslexic. I wrote the thing backwards. I'm legitimately dyslexic. I'm really sorry. That is JL. He said it correct, and I wrote JK. I'm so sorry about that. Make sure you make that correction. I did not see it happening. Just make sure you see that. Now, I'm sorry, what did you say? Yep, so he told us that JL equals 144. Equals, and what other part do we know? Cam? How much is that one? 37 plus KL. It's asking us to find KL, so I'm going to get that by itself. What do I have to do to get KL by itself? Subtract. Yep, so we're going to subtract our 37. Again, tomorrow, if you need a calculator, remind me, and I will get out my calculator so we have some. 
What is 144 minus 37? 107. Yeah, way to go. That's quick. 107. So KL equals 107. Over here, I could have written DF equals 58. Okay. Any questions so far on this? Next one up. We're skipping this. This is our example four, and it's our last examples. You have one question on your homework like this. If we have time after this, I'd like to go through that. So the cities shown on the map lie approximately on a straight line. Find the distance from Tulsa, Oklahoma to St. Louis, Missouri. So we have, we want to find the distance from Tulsa to St. Louis. I'm going to abbreviate this based on, let's see, the first letters. So we have the distance from Lubbock to St. Louis. I'm going to call that LS. Lubbock to St. Louis equals the sum of its parts. Does somebody want to tell me how we could write that? I appreciate it. I just waiting to see if anybody else wanted to steal it. If nobody else wants it, I'm going to give it to Cam. Cam, you want to tell me? That's exactly right. So I wrote Lubbock to Tulsa, just abbreviated with the first letters. Tulsa to St. Louis, perfect. Based on our picture, which parts do we know? Jalen? Uh, Tulsa, and, no, Blue Black and St. Louis. How much did we have? 738. 738. And then we know one other part. Does somebody else want to give us one other part? Yes, sir. And how much is that? 377. And again, the part that they're asking us to find is find the distance from Tulsa to St. Louis. So we're looking to find that TS. We got to get that TS by itself. How do I do it? Subtract. We're going to subtract. Subtract 377. Okay. I know we don't have calculators. Everybody does it. Yep, John, what did you get? 361. 361. TS equals 361. Perfect. I need to write that one so where you guys can see it. Your computer program might make you guys say something like miles. Am I at the bottom? I'm not 100% sure. So just be aware of that. Nice work, guys. You guys are doing a really good job on this section. Our last example here. The city shown on... In a, hold on, let's try that again. The city shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. Find the distance from Albuquerque, New Mexico to... Bro Provo is how I say it, Utah. I don't know if that's actually correct. So who would like to create our first line? Who would like to create the symbol line? Yep, hi, Ron. Uh, PC. PC. Sorry, I was writing it down. What, then what comes next? PA. PA. AC. AC, nice work. Okay, who would like to tell us what we know? Ken? Uh, we know the whole mile. 680. And then from Albuquerque to, however you pronounce that, is uh, 231. 231, Carlsbad, yep. So we have the PA here is what we don't know. So I wanted to make sure that I brought that down. And now I have to look for what that distance from, I call it Provo, I don't know if that's correct, to Albuquerque. So we need to do some subtraction again. We're going to subtract that 231. Ooh, let me write that again. 231. What do we get here? Yes. Okay, you got it? 441? Does that sound right? 449. 449. I'm so sorry. I did not hear you. 449. I'm going to verify that that's what I got. Yep. And again, miles. Excellent work, guys. 